Hey friends, Chubby Meeple back with another uh, game preview for you. Today, we're going to take a look at Raid, a quick little two-player card game, could play up to four, uh, but essentially a two-player card game that is set in uh, the time of Norse mythology and Odin has fallen to power and your uh, your tribesmen or your, your warriors are going to go out and try to uh, become the next village to rule uh, Midgard. So let's jump to the table, I'll show you how it plays, and then I'll jump back here and give you my thoughts on Raid. Raid is a competitive card game for two players that will generally play in roughly 10 to 15 minutes for a round. Uh, so it's a very quick playing game. Players may want to play a best of three scenario for a longer bit of a game. Uh, but we're going to give a brief overview how this plays. There are also some additional variants in the rule book. There are variants for three and four players. There are variants for a drafting uh, your initial hand of cards. And then there is a tournament structure um, that's all in the rule book as well. But we're going to cover the main two player game here and talk about how the game plays. Just a quick overview overview. I'm not going to do a real deep rules dive on this. Um, and then we'll jump over and I'll give you my thoughts. So uh, in Raid, every player is going to be dealt um, four rune cards. You're going to have, uh, each player is going to have one Ragnarok card, one Well of Mimir, and two Oarsmen, as well as a face down god that they will keep separate um, or secret from the other player. Your god card and all of your rune cards are going to be one-time use as the game goes on. You'll also deal each player a hand of six warrior cards and then set the deck up where both players can reach. Throughout the game of Raid, players are going to be using the warrior cards from their hands to build longboats that they will be using to attack their opponents. In order to attack and deal damage to your opponent, you first have to push through their defenses or their longboats. Gameplay is incredibly simple here. We're going to take a hand of cards. I'll put these up here so you can kind of see uh, what the cards look like and how these work. The cards are valued from 1 to 10, and they come in two different colors. You've got this goldish kind of color, and then there's a blue color, and there are reasons for that as well. Players can have any combination of numbers and colors in their hand, and they'll be using those to build their longboats. And we'll talk about longboat building here in a second. The very first thing you need to do is your draw phase. In your draw phase, players can draw between one and th up to up to three cards. So one, two, three cards, they're going to get drawn, but you can only have a max hand size of seven. Since I got dealt a hand of six, I'm only going to draw one card and add that to my hand so that I have a full hand of seven cards. In future rounds, as I'm building longboats and playing more cards to the table, I'll have less cards in my hand and I can draw a maximum of three cards to get me as close to seven as possible. There could definitely be turns in the game where you will be holding less than seven cards in your hand. When building longboats, there are a couple of rules to follow. First, you can build any number of longboats that you wish on a turn, meaning that I can add warriors to an existing longboat, I can start new longboats, the kicker to that is you can only have a maximum of three longboats built at any given time. So if I've got three longboats that are at their max capacity, which is four cards or four warriors, then I can do nothing else with that. So I'm going to do a longboat here. I'm going to throw down this giant. So this is the giant here. For what He's a value of nine. We'll drop him on there. We'll throw a dire wolf with a value of five. We'll throw a scald with a value of four. And then I'll just throw down a Draugr with a value of three to build my longboat. Now, I do have a 10 in my hand. I'm going to talk about these a little later because these are uh, considered elite warriors. They actually have special abilities on them. Um, talk a little bit about the structure of the cards themselves. The cards themselves are very easy to understand. They have a value, again, between 1 and 10. There's going to be a name down the side for flavor. There's also a little bit of a brief description. And then you're going to have a little hexagonal note down here on the bottom of all of these warrior cards that are either going to have a plus one or a plus two in them. And that is the amount of damage that you will do when this, when this particular warrior invades uh, your opponent's village. And we'll talk about that here in a second. So I've built my longboat of four people, or four warriors. In order to attack, my longboat has to be at capacity, meaning that I have to have four people in that longboat. Right now, I could choose to attack my opponent because there's no they don't have a longboat of their own in play. So I could simply choose to attack them since they have no longboat for defense. I simply would choose a warrior of mine and send it across as raid damage, which is kept in a separate pile um, by my opponent. That raid damage is going to determine who wins the game. Whoever takes the least amount of raid damage when the, when the ground is over, when the game is over, is declared the winner. So my opponent now has one piece of raid damage, and I have a longboat remaining here of three warriors still. That is the end of my turn, because I've already attacked. So you have a draw phase, 
you have a building phase where you're building your longboats and you have your attack phase. Your attack phase is always the last thing that happens and is what will end your turn. So you wanna make sure you've taken any additional actions that you, can, that you want to take um, prior to that. Um, and then we'll talk about some special combinations with numbers and, and colors and things as you're building those longboats here in a second. My opponent, I'm gonna pick up their hand here and draw a card for them. And we're gonna build a longboat and I will show you. We're gonna start a longboat off by playing this number 10. This is a Norn. The Norn, you'll notice down here, has a gold special ability here that lets me draw an additional warrior card. So when I play this longboat out here to start, we'll put the Norn out here, I get to draw an additional warrior card. This card could be something that gets added to my hand. It could then be something that could be played uh, later on and, and uh, added to. I'm then gonna play a Jarl. What a Jarl does for me in the gold text here is that I get to steal a non-combined warrior from an enemy longboat and place it onto one of my longboats. So we're gonna throw this Jarl down here. All of the tens have special abilities. There are Norns, there are Jarls, and there are Valkyries that all have special abilities. The Norns all let you draw an extra warrior card. The Jarls let you steal a card or a warrior from your enemy's longboat and add it to one of your own. And the Valkyries simply let you kill a warrior that's in play and send it to Valhalla or the discard pile. So I've played that Jarl. I'm going to choose to steal my opponent's giant since I can take any one of their, any one of their warriors. I'm going to add the giant to my longboat. And then I'm going to go ahead and fill out the longboat with one of my number sevens here. Now I want to point out a couple of quick things here. So now my opponent, and I still have, I still have four cards in my hand. I could build a second longboat over here if I wanted to. Uh, and in fact, I think I'm going to just for, just for demonstration purposes here. We'll build it. Um, let's see here. Let's build this guy here. We'll overlap, move this. I'm gonna move the draw pile off camera. We're gonna build this longboat here with a seven, a six, a five, and a four. Now the rule book does not state that you have to play your cards in descending order like I am, but it is in your best interest to do so. Um, in fact, I'm gonna take this four off. I'm gonna put this two down here just to illustrate another point. All right, so now I've built my longboats and I can attack at this point. I can attack, before I can attack my opponent's village, I have to attack and get through their longboat. And this is the way combat works. And this is why I recommend building your boats from highest number to lowest number as you build them. Because when you attack your opponent's longboats, the boats are going to attack each other um, based on the cards that are across from one another. And so what's going to happen is if I attack, if I use this longboat to attack this longboat and try to get it out of my way so that this longboat can attack the village and, and add some raid damage, then what, what is going to happen is my top number, which in this case is a 7, is going to get compared with the card right across from it, which is the 5 in this case. Seven's higher than 5, so this dire wolf would be killed off and taken to Valhalla, or the discard pile. And then the next line, my troll, my number 6 card, would fight the scald number 4 and kill it off. And so now that, long, that enemy longboat has been destroyed. This, this longboat is still completely intact. I still have all four of my warriors on it. And this longboat over here still needs to attack or still can attack if I would like it to. And I will, since there's nothing there defending it, I can go ahead and attack. When I attack and there's no defense, I simply send a warrior over to my opponent's village as raid damage. I'm gonna choose to send my Norn, which is one of my tens, over here. Now you'll notice not only do these number tens have special abilities on them, but they also provide two raid damage. So my, my opponent over here has suffered a couple points of raid damage, whereas I over here have only suffered one. So currently this player up here is winning. A couple quick things to point out. Um, I'm, gonna put, I'm gonna reset all of this like we had it because I wanna show you a different thing that I could do. So in, this, in the example I just gave, we used this longboat to attack this longboat and take it completely out so that this longboat was cleared to come in and attack. One of the things, uh, when building longboats, you can do certain warrior combinations that will give your boats special abilities. One of those is what's called a raid party. A raid party is having a longboat of four, uh, four warriors from the same clan or the same color. In this case, this boat has four warriors that are all blue. What that allows me to do, a raiding party, allows me to attack my opponent ignore any longboats they have and simply send a warrior to them as damage. So I could, rather than using this longboat to attack this one and take it out, I could just send that value 10 Norn that does two raid damage. 
I can just send this directly to my opponent as damage because I build a raiding party and have a boat that is built of all four blue. And then this one I could simply leave out for defense purposes, uh, or I could go ahead and attack and fight since I would, as we saw previously, I would be able to kill this longboat off, leaving my opponent with nothing to attack me with. So there are some options there. Some of the other things that you can have on your boat is a double. Uh, any longboat that has two numbers that are the same on it. So we'll pop this out and just say this is my longboat, a 766. So I've got an, an Uffholden and two trolls. Normally a longboat has to have four warriors on it in order to attack. Any longboat, however, that, only, that has a double, meaning a pair of matching numbers, that longboat can attack immediately, regardless of whether it's at capacity. So I could use this longboat to attack this longboat, still killing off the dire wolf and the scald, and still clearing the way for my, for my uh, other longboats to get in. If I have a triple, which would add a third, uh, a third six to this, if I've got one, um, if I have a triple, I could throw that in there as well. What the triple allows me to do is the triple allows me to attack immediately, Again, whether I'm at capacity or not, so if, I, if it was just the three sixes, so let's say this seven wasn't here and I just had a longboat made of the three sixes, those three sixes could attack. The difference is that this boat with the triple can attack twice, meaning that I could use this boat to attack. This troll would kill that dire wolf. The second troll would kill this scald. That would eliminate the boat. It could then use its second attack directly on the village and send a warrior in as raid damage. So being able to attack multiple times with a boat uh, is very powerful. You also have the option uh, or the ability to potentially build a quad. A quad is a longboat of four warriors where all four of them have the same power, or the same strength. This allows the longboat to attack immediately and to attack three times uh, in a single attack. So being able to, again, knock out the longboat and then I could, with my other two attacks, I could send two of these warriors uh, to the boat or to the village to my opponent's village as raid damage. Um, there is also the um, the other combination is what's called a double double. A double double is simply having two pair. So in this case, two sixes and two sevens. That longboat can attack three times on the same turn. Um, so again, it can it can essentially do um, what the quad can do, being able to attack three times. Um, in that in that same turn and and being able to knock things out and that is the case as well if this starts out as a double double and in fighting the other longboats I end up losing some of those warriors because I started it with a double double or a quad or a triple I can still use my additional attacks because the longboat started out having the numbers required to do so so those are the different combinations that you will see uh, when fighting longboats one of the other things to point out um, is that when you are in battle, if we have a longboat that has, uh, let's say we have a longboat here, I'm gonna jostle some of this around a little bit. So say we have a seven, a five, and a four, and then we have a six, six, seven on this longboat. So what's gonna happen here, actually, let's not do a six, six, seven, let's make it a six, six, four. So, um, oh, I need to do one more thing. I need to put one more, let's make it six, six, four, two, okay. So now what's going to happen, this longboat, if they decide to attack, or if I decide to attack here, their seven is higher than my six. So this troll is in danger of losing. However, this card is not paired up against another card, meaning that this, this Huskarl here, this number two, is out floating on its own. It's not fighting anyone. There's not a card directly across from it to fight. So what's going to happen is I can actually use this card and add it to any of my other warriors. So I could add this Huskarl up here with this troll, making it an eight against that seven, which would take that out. The second troll being a six is higher than the dire wolf's five. And then the two skulls, both being fours, would kill each other and they would both lose. So what would effectively happen is this, this longboat would be wiped out. This longboat would end up looking like this without the scald in there. So when you're fighting any, any if you've got a, a, a bigger longboat than one of your opponent's longboats, you can uh, combine your warriors together uh, to make them even stronger. So maybe you can combine and get up to an 11 or a 12 and be able to take out one of those 10 strength Jarls, which are the highest cards um, in there. A couple other things we need to talk about, things you can do on your turn. It's very simple. You draw your card, you build your longboats, you attack. The other thing you have the option of doing is activating or using any of your rune cards. 
We'll start with the oarsmen. The oarsmen are value zero cards. They don't add any power to your longboat because they're a value zero. However, they are essentially wild cards. So you can use these to create uh, or strengthen uh, combinations. So I could use that zero, for example, over here, I have a 662, maybe I throw an oarsman in here and that oarsman would act as either a six, so it could be a triple, which would allow me to attack immediately twice, or I could use it as a two and make it a double-double so that I could attack three times. So those oarsmen let you, uh, they let you kind of build on or create combinations with your cards. Each player has two oarsmen to start the game. Once you've used them and they've been killed in battle, they don't come back unless you've got some kind of special ability that would let you do that. So that's the way the oarsmen work. Each player also has a well of Mimir. The Well of Mimir, when you activate this rune stone, it allows you to draw two warrior cards. However, you're going to sustain two raid damage. And that means when I play my Well of Mimir, so I'll say I play this card out here, I would immediately get to draw two warriors from the deck and add them to my hand. And then the Well of Mimir is going to go into my own raid damage pile down here, adding two raid damage at the end of the game. The other card, the other rune that you can activate potentially, is Ragnarok. Ragnarok simply destroys all longboats in play, including your own, and you take three raid damage for doing it. Um, so if, you're, if your opponent's got a lot of longboats, so right now in this situation, my opponent has two longboats and I don't have any, I could play this Ragnarok card, put it in my own damage pile to take the three damage, and I could simply destroy these two longboats that are out there and discard them off into Ragnarok to where they're no longer accessible. Play is going to continue back and forth with a player drawing cards, building up longboats, attacking their opponent, and then the opponent will do the same. Draw cards, build longboats, attack the opponent. It's going to go back and forth until the final warrior card is drawn from this deck. The player who draws the last card will finish their turn as normal, and then their opponent gets to take one, one last turn. At that point, what you will do is you will pick up your damage pile that you've taken throughout the game. You'll total up all of the points of damage that you've taken in the hexagonal spaces at the bottom. You'll total those up, and the player with the least amount of raid damage is going to be the winner. The other thing I should talk about really quickly is the god cards. Everybody gets to, Each player gets dealt a face-down god card. There are 10 of them in the game, and you will have... Um, one card that was dealt face-down that basically gives you a one-time, one once-per-game use. So in this case, this is uh, Thor. Uh, so he wields, wields the power of Mjolnir, which is just simply flavor text. But his ability is to kill any two warriors in play. So anytime during the game, I can flip this card face up, tell my opponent I'm activating my god power, and simply kill two warriors that are in play. More than likely, they're my opponent's warriors. One of the other god powers that's over here uh, with Loki. We have Loki here. So the, the cunning trickster, this allows you to steal a warrior that's in play and place it into your hand. So I can take, if my opponent throws down one of those Norns that's 10 power, or a Valkyrie that's 10 and kills off one of my things, I can activate, on my turn, I can activate Loki and steal one of their warriors and place it into my hand so that I can play later. That is how to play Raid. So that is Raid, published by Nether Games, and this game is um, very quick to play. I really enjoy the fact that it's easy to learn, it's quick to play, I can play a game in 15 minutes, if I want something longer I can do a best 2 out of 3, um, and then they, offer, they also offer uh, some additional ways to play with um, uh, three to four player rules where um, on the camera you saw me using one deck of cards there actually are uh, two decks of cards in the box uh, with different different colored backs on them uh, so you can play a three to four player game give more you know give each player you know yeah, that way you've got four people that have a god and, and runes and and warriors you've got enough cards to play uh, that number of players there's also a draft variant that is in the rule book that allows you to uh, take your initial hand of six cards once you've dealt six cards to each player you you flip up uh, six cards in the center of the table, face up, and then um, one play. You determine uh, who wants to be the first to draft. That person, whoever whoever's first to draft, will pick a card from the center of the table if they would like, and uh, put it into their hand and replace it with a card that was in their hand. So a little bit of trading and kind of seeding your first hand. Um, the player that drafts second will actually get the first turn of the game. Uh, 
So you so there's a little bit of bound. Do you want to draft first? Do you want to go first? Um, and the draft will continue going back and forth until both players pass and are happy with the hands they have. The six cards that are then in the middle of the table get discarded, and then you play the game just like you saw it on camera, which is very cool. There is also a two-player, what they call the tournament variant, where you take uh, both decks of cards, uh, and this is the reason the, car the, the card decks have different backs on them. Uh, each player has their own deck of cards, uh, so you, and you play with the full deck on your own. So I have my whole deck of cards to myself. I have two Ragnarok, two Well of Mimir, and four Oarsmen. Uh, and then I'm also dealt uh, five gods. Each player gets five gods out of the ten that come in each, in each deck. You have five gods you can use. Um, the trick with the tournament variant is that your runes and your gods don't reset uh, from game to game. Uh, so you still play a best of three style, uh, but you don't once you once you've used Thor, for example, you don't get to reset Thor for game two. He's used and you can't use him again. Very cool way to play. Um, let's get to the game itself. Overall, I really enjoy this game, um, and I don't know. Um, what, I don't, I'm not sure. This is a uh, prototype version. Uh, of the game I received from Nether Realm, so that I could do this preview and, and give you some information on it. I have to believe this is pretty close to final format if it's not final. Um, it's very nice, uh, you know, the little little flip top box here uh, that opens up. There's some uh, inside of the rules there, or not the rules, but the contents, so it gives you an idea of what's in the box. Um, the space here is where the two decks of cards go. Uh, they both fit right in there side by side, um, so it's very easy to travel with. There's also a, a small rule book that goes down in there so it's just a small you know rule book that fits in there um very well produced uh the card quality on these and this is what leads me to believe that if this is not final product it's very near final the card quality is really nice it feels really good in your hand um i really really enjoy uh, just the simplicity of the cards themselves. So when I look at, you know, I, I look at these cards, the simplicity, they're easy to understand, you know, raid damage down at the bottom, the abilities if they have them. I really enjoy the ease of when I fan these cards in my hand, even though when I'm building my long boats, I'm generally stacking cards, you know, kind of in this manner so that you can see uh, the cards that are in each long boat. I'm kind of stacking them this way. But when I fan the cards in my hand and I look at them, there, it's very easy to tell what cards I have uh, and and be able to play with the very well thought out graphic design. Um, the simple artwork, I mean, the axe thrower is just a couple of axes. I really enjoy the simple artwork on it. Um, it really gives the game a unique feel. It's not like anything I've ever seen uh, in terms of, you know, they didn't go over the top with the, you know, splat, you know, flashy colors and, and, you know, there's no gruesome, you know, I mean, obviously when you're raiding villages and you're pillaging and you're, you're doing these raids, um, you know, that's a pretty graphic thing. You can be, you know, you can, you're murdering people and you're doing all this other stuff, but they didn't, they, they, they kept the art very light. Um, and you know, it's not bloody, it's not graphic. And so it's very family friendly in that regard. The rules, rules wise, it's pretty simple. Um, I have played this, um, a couple of times with uh, my kids, uh, my youngest being 13, uh, she was able to grasp the rules just fine, uh, actually beat me a couple of times at it. So um, I, overall, I think this game is fantastic. If you're looking for a quick game, even something you could take out and play while you're sitting at a restaurant waiting for your meal to get to the table um, or taking out to, a, you know, just a, a night out with friends, something quick you want to get to the table, you don't want to spend two, three hours uh, playing a game, this is a perfect fit for that. Um, and then if you decide after 15 minutes and the game's over, uh, you can either be done with it and put it away and, and, you know, I beat you or you beat me, or you play a best of three um, and you, you spend half an hour, 45 minutes playing the game three times and, and whoever wins two of those three uh, is your overall winner. Overall, highly recommend this game. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It plays quick, super easy to teach, super easy to travel with, and you don't even need to take that flip box. You can literally, once you know the rules, you can literally take uh, just a deck of, you know, a little deck of cards. Everything fits in this box, and you can travel with it and play a little two-player game with that. Uh, you would need the box if you're going to play three or four players because you need both decks, or if you're going to do that tournament style. Uh, but I would definitely recommend checking out Raid from Nether Games. Uh, you can check it out at their website. This will be, um, I believe, coming to Kickstarter here very soon. And uh, until next time, if you have any questions, first of all, drop those down below. I'm, I'm happy to answer those if something didn't make sense or you need some clarification. Happy to answer those to the best of my ability. And until next time, as always, keep gaming, friends.